this is what Peter Forsberg is angry about. Watch this. He gets clipped by Vinnie Prosper, puts his hand right up, tries to show the referee, hey, come on, call a penalty. But you know what, Brian? You can't do that in the middle of a power play. That's, I mean, he's distracted. He's not in the game. Things are not going right, and the Czechs are loving that. Axelson dumps it in. Both crewed out of the net. With a flip along the boards, Garamir Yager, five NHL scoring titles. Left it there for Straka. Straka had the first goal of the game. Checked off the puck as Dopita. Along the boards, Axelson is checked, but the Swedes break it out. Johansson, manhandled by Yager. No call there. Yager brings it over the line. And now it's whistled on the offside. Are you ready for some football? Well, if so, tune in to ABC this Thursday. Al, John and company kick off the 35th anniversary of Monday Night Football with a special Thursday night edition featuring the defending Super Bowl champion, New England Patriots. Tom Brady in the past will get a tough test right off the bat. As they look to match wits against AFC East Bowl. Peyton Manning and all the Indianapolis Colts. The action kicking off Thursday at 8 on ABC Sports Championship Television. Roman Hammerlick and uh, Marcus Nielsen yapping at each other as they went to the bench after that, too. So the, the Czechs are, are, are picking the right spots here to, to really get underneath the Swedes' skin. It's working. Zablinski checked there by Forsberg. Good hit. Forsberg takes the puck away. Forsberg trying to flip it in front. Lost with a pair of skates. It goes out to Havlat. He's checked there by Jonsson. Zetterberg in his own zone. Another pass that was nearly picked off. Now this one is by Fisher. Well, Peter Forsberg is angry. He's going after everybody that he can out there. He hits Zedlitschke twice on this shift as he goes to the bench. He better watch himself. He'll be the next Swede to end up in the penalty box. Jump in intended for Modine. Spot check goes the other way. Picked up there by Ruchinski, who clears. Cross ice. Team Sweden. It's off the back of the skate. Help there on the dump it from Olin. Bokun steers it to the corner for spot check. Off Hayduk, a race for the puck. Chianek, look at those reels. He'll get there first. Chianek flips it back. Left side, Keverley shot, almost beat Telgrist from that angle. He stopped it. He had no idea where it went after that. He's making the saves. You got to give Telquist credit here. In this second period, he's made three or four really solid saves, or, or the Swedes are absolutely dead. Alfredson's over the line. Far boards, backhand flip, nowhere near Volkun. Off the boards, near side. That's Tornstrom keeping it in line. Into the corner, Sundin. Back towards Tornstrom, it comes out of the zone. Hits somebody on the bench. So it's still a 2-0 lead for the Czech Republic here in the second period. Welcome back to ESPN and ESPN 2's continuing coverage of the Toyota World Cup of Hockey from the Globe Arena in Stockholm. With Neil Smith and Brian Engelblom, I'm J.P. Della Camera. We have seen tonight Sweden at their worst and the Czech Republic at their best. As a result, it's a 2-0 lead for the Czechs on top. I talked to some of the Czech players and Czech defensemen, and sometimes when you play with your own players, you, you, you get a better sense of what guys are like. I was talking to uh, Yuri Fisher of the Detroit Red Wings saying, what guys have surprised me? So Yager is even better than I thought he was. He's dangerous everywhere, I swear, even from the red line. And he said, the best hands on our team, David Viborny. And that one shocked me a little, because there are a lot of talented players here. I know Viborny's a very good player, but he was really impressed with the way Viborny can be in traffic, through skates, over sticks, saucer passes. He said the guy's incredible with the puck. Even more incredible. Vaborny doesn't have a point, but he has looked good so far in this tournament. Another deflection, that one out. And another face-off coming up. And Rosie Ruzicka in charge of this team after the tragic death of Ivan Holinka, lost in a car accident in August. And this team came out. You wonder if maybe that was on the players' minds because they were all so close to it, but now they've rebounded. Well, when we broadcast that first game uh, back in Helsinki, which was the Czechs in Finland, and the Czechs looked completely out of it. I mean, they looked like they had jet lag beyond belief, and they looked disorganized. They looked disinterested. They've certainly turned this around. DJ Axelson over the line, trying to drop it. Nobody really close enough for that drop pass. I love the makeup of this first line for the Czechs, too. Look at Straka, just on the fly up the middle. Vinny Prospel's got great brains and great hands. And, of course, Yarmir Yager, still the number one overall talent in the world, in my mind. Combination of, of, of skills and scoring skills and, and uh, uh, just great abilities on the ice to dominate. 
uh, I, I love the look that you get from this line and what they can do to the opposition, and they've been doing it for the last two games. Crossbell in for the draw with Marcus Nielsen. Johansson trying to clear it out. Kept there at the far side. Near the point, Johansson goes in after it, but the Czechs still have it. Jager battling along the boards. It goes three to Straka. Rister save off the blocker of Telchrist. And now he's going to cover it up with traffic in front. But Marty Straka, so dangerous tonight. His goal started things off, and he almost got another. Well, he sure did. And again, Brian said it earlier, but Michael Telquist coming through again. He was shaky at the beginning when they scored those two goals. Martin Straka can shoot a hockey puck, folks. And that one was good by Telquist getting right over there. He's snuffing all the rebounds out around this point. This is a Sweets working on Yager, but the puck comes loose to Straka. And Strack is the captain of this team, too. I think he's an inspiration, Brian, to a lot of these guys. He's got that first goal of the game tonight, and he always works. I, I love the way the guy plays because he plays with energy. He's got great quickness, incredible acceleration, excellent skills. That's got to be his fourth really good shot in the game, and that's a bad sign for the Swedes that Strack is getting that many chances. It was Vinny Prospel who fished that one off the wall and quickly got it right onto the tape of Strack to get those chances. That's the efficiency that with which the Czechs are working in this game. Fisher around those boards, high off the glass, kept in by Johansson. In the corner, they work it out at Zetterberg. It deflects free in the slot. Backhander is wide of Okun. The chance was there from Paulson. And now it comes free, and the Czechs could have a break. Two on one right now. Straka gives it up on the right side. Looks to get a return. Quick shot and a score by Zidlitsky. It's three to nothing as they countered up ice after Sweden misses a chance to maybe make it 2-1. Yeah, but a really bad, badly timed pinch by Matthias Olin on the left wing side caused this two-on-one. He moved in at an inappropriate time, and boy, Zidlitsky jumped on it. And again, with Martin Straka, we just finished talking about him, Brian. Martin Straka gave it over to Zidlitsky. He's a dangerous guy offensively. We were talking about that the other day. I know how much you like him, and he proved you right again. Zidlitsky is one of the big unknown talents in the National Hockey League. After one year in the league, did great things for Nashville. Look at the angle he's on. That's a 50-goal scorer shot. That was outstanding by Merrick. Zidlitsky. He was looking to shoot all the way. He was not un, uh, intimidated by his own teammate Straka in the middle of the ice. He knew the pass was taken away. He made the right decision, not just because he scored, but because that pass would never have gotten through. Right thing, right thing, and, it, and he scores top shelf 3 zip. Goals in three straight games for Zidlitsky. Covered up by Bokun. 3 nothing. Checks with his break in the action. Let's head back to David Amber and Barry Morrows in our ESPN studios. Guys. All right, guys, in the second intermission, we will look forward to USA and Russia. Yep. And right now, we've got to look at this game. My goodness, Czech Republic. Well, I'm going to show you in the second intermission why the Czechs have turned a corner, why they're so dangerous, what difference they're doing now that they didn't do the previous games. And it's pretty uh, monumental when you see them do it and, and see how well they're doing it. Czech Republic dead last in the 96 World Cup, but looking good right now. Back to you. Back to Stockholm and live coverage of the World Cup of Hockey. Sweden are in a bigger hole than they were moments ago. They're down now by three and showing no real signs of life of getting back into this one. Uh, the, ki the killer instinct by the Czechs there was outstanding because Zidlitsky saw the situation. He's a defenseman. He knew Olin jumped in the wrong time. Oh, another good chance there. Could have been a fourth goal. Played in front and Elias was stopped by the stick of Telkvist. It's all Czech Republic here. And you hear the fans' reaction. We've talked about this all night long. This is a sea of yellow jerseys representing Sweden and they don't like this. Hader shot stopped in front. And that's whistling at their own team. Very talented people here. You, you don't just boo, you whistle. And they're whistling at their own team. That's bad. Alfredson with it. Sweden dropping it back. Oh, Janssen nearly lost it there. Could have been a break the other way for Milan Hader. And now as a player, I, I know what this feeling is like. You're down 3 nothing. you're at home, everything is going bad. you got to go out there and be creative when everybody's yelling at you and you know you got to get something going. That's tough on a very creative team even. In the corner, Jonsson. Battle along the boards. Vokun comes out, steers it far side for Ruchinski. I want to say that Thomas Vokun has initiated 75 or 80 percent of the breakouts. He touches every puck, he gets it to the D, sometimes he gets it right to the winger, and they get it out of the zone. That's their game plan, and they're still sticking to it. Vokun's the key to it. He gets another one. Watch him fish this one around, right to the winger again, and see if the winger can get it out. Bingo. No problem. He's been more active in that capacity than we've seen him in the previous games we've yes. covered. 
You wonder if that's something that they thought about. Thomas Camberley told me when you play the same team three times in 12 days, you pick up things on videotape and you see tendencies, and maybe that's one of the things they worked on. You can't get keep getting beaten the same way. It's the old thing. You, get, you can be stupid, but you can't be an idiot. You can't be that stupid. <laughs> Four players behind the net. That puck's still free. Hamerlick hitting his man and taking him down. Play continuing on. Hamerlick taking Forsberg out of the play. Czech Republic wanted more tonight. Every battle along the boards, they're winning. And as we take a look at Peter Forsberg as he goes back, says another thing to the referee. He's going to have to be careful with his frustration. you got to wonder, Brian, is this the last we're going to see of Peter Forsberg once the lockout comes and he stays here? Quick shot for Borny. Could have put this one on ice if it's not already. No pun intended. That one is stopped, though, by Telchris. Stay with ESPN tonight, 9 p.m. on the 2004 World Series of Poker. Continues from the Horseshoe Casino in Las Vegas. Two more hours of the main event, the No Limit Hold'em World Championship. The 2004 World Series of Poker on ESPN is presented by Miller High Life. Come to every Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. Well, Telchris keeps giving him another chance. Yeah, Peter Forsberg hasn't signed a contract anywhere yet. He told the Colorado Avalanche that he would tell them after the World Cup. There is a continuing speculation, and it's only speculation. People think he is going to sign here in Sweden and stay. But again, we're only repeating speculation. Peter will not talk about it, but it's possible we haven't seen him in the NHL for a while after whatever lockout there may or may not be. Well, we know one thing, that Tommy Salo has definitely signed with Peter Forsberg's team, uh, that being Modo. Yeah. And, and they're best of friends. At the point... Checks will keep it in play. Centering pass in front of Kennedy for Verborne, and that's blocked. Just a split second or so left in this as the horn sounds, and the Sweden team is getting booed off the ice. What an incredible night right now, and it's a 3 0 lead for the Czech Republic over Sweden in this World Cup quarterfinal. Welcome to the Toyota Intermission Report. Barry Melrose, David Amber, the Czech Republic, a commanding 3 nothing lead, maybe becoming the team to beat. We'll take a look into that a little bit in later the European on. Pool. In the European pool. Of course, in the North American pool, you have the USA and Russia meeting for a second time. They met just last week in St. Paul, Minnesota. Things didn't work out so well for the Americans. They're one bright spot right there. Mike Medano to keep the chuck. That made it one all, but then one of the prettier goals you'll ever see. One of the prettiest goals by one of the greatest offensive talents you'll ever see. Right there, Kovalev, Toast Tony Amonti, who's staying back for Chelios, and then a beautiful goal uh, by uh, Kovalev. A great, great player. And you're going to see Victor Kozlov come in. A goal I should like to have back, but really maybe the only soft goal he let in this tournament so far. 3-1, Russia wins that game, and now they're having a rematch, and of course, win and move on, lose and go home. With a full preview, we have Gary Thorne, Jeremy Roenick, and Bill Clement in St. Paul, Minnesota. Now we're down to the elimination round. The United States will take on Russia here in St. Paul tonight. And, Bill, the question regarding the United States was exactly who's going to be in that lineup for this game. Well, in the ranks of the skaters, there will be no changes in the lineup from the last Team USA lineup that knocked off Slovakia. That means the younger lineup will be in place, especially with the fast starters like, uh, like Jamie Langebrunner, like Jason Blake. But Brett Hull will not play, and he may have just played his last game ever representing the United States. So no changes in the skaters' department. There will be a change in goal. Robert Esch rested the last game. He will start. I think he's going to be the difference in this game. He is a proven big game player. He proved that last year for the Philadelphia Flyers in the playoffs. And I think Team USA will win this game based on the play of Robert Esch. All right. In order to do that, JR, it's going to have to be a better performance for Team USA than we saw against Russia in the first meeting here in this World Cup. They did not play well. Kovalev was outstanding, and Russia really dominated. Well, anybody who saw that game last week knows that uh, this team has got some serious punch. U.S. really came out flat the other day. They really uh, took them for granted. They came out, and it was the Russians who took the physical play and showed their dominance with the puck and their creativeness and and I, you seen that uh, Kovalev goal the other day guys there's not been a better goal in the whole World Cup that showed that this team is already ready for business and they won that, that goal all right they will want it again team USA will they want it as much we're gonna find out st. Paul's the site and the winner goes on the loser goes home
All right, guys, the puck drops 7 Eastern on ESPN2. U.S. badly outplayed against Russia last time. What do they have to do differently? Well, first off, I think it's a gutsy call by Ron Wilson not dressing Brett Hall. I think if that power play of the Americans goes 0 for 4 and Brett Hall's not in the lineup, Ronnie Wilson's going to take some heat after the game. But the Americans must make the Russian players play defense. You must make Kovalev check. You must take uh, Kovalchuk check. Those guys are great offensive players. They're not great defensive players. Make them come back. Make them pick up the third guy. Make them find guys moving in their own zone. Uh, uh, do a little transition in the neutral zone. Make them think who they're going to pick up. If you don't do that and let them play offense, 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 is going to be a long night for the American team. Ash is a good goaltender. I think that's a strength for the Americans. I think that's one area they're better than the Russians. Defensively, I think they're better than the Russians. But offensively, the Russians are better. Make those guys play defense. The Americans got to do that tonight. Sold out arena. It's going to be a great one. Of course, if you don't have a ticket to that one, your ticket is right here on ESPN2. U.S. and Russia puck drop 7 Eastern from St. Paul, Minnesota. Again, it is elimination, one game. More intermission coming your way next. The World Cup of Hockey rolls on right here on the ESPN Family and Networks. Finland, they're into the semis. They beat Germany 2-1. to one. Of course, you see the Czech Republic leading Sweden 3-0. Just 20 minutes left in that one. And then tonight, USA and Russia, Canada and Slovakia. And we will have your final four action, of course, right here on the ESPN Family of Networks. Sweden, at the beginning, we said this could be a team to beat. Right now, they look like a beaten team. Well, I'm going to show you why the Czechs are winning. And the Czechoslovakian team is very easy to figure out. I said at the start of the game, if they want to win, they're capable of beating anybody in the world. In this period, they want to win. Look at Jager here. Look at the effort coming from behind, not taking a penalty. Look at the strength he's showing. If he's working that hard defensively, folks, you know he's working that hard offensively, too. If Jarmar Jager, the leader of the Swedes, is trying that hard, you know Strack is trying. Zitlitsky's turned into one of the best young defensemen in the world today. They've got a ton of guys that can score. But Coons as good a goaltender is in the tournament. This team is dangerous. I can guarantee you the Czechs uh, are looking forward to playing Canada, believe it or not. This team is on a high right now. If they can get through the third period, which it certainly looks like they will, they're one of the most dangerous teams in the tournament right now. And they've got the Swedes' number. Remember, they outshot them 40-20 to 20 in the first time they played, and here they Six are now. Six straight goals now against the Swedes. So. A 3 nothing lead. Czech Republic last in the last World Cup of Hockey. They have something to prove. Oh, well, what are they going to do? Marek Zidlitsky giving the Czech Republic a 3 nothing lead. Third period action coming your way next. Uh, Barry, 20 minutes left, and we could have seen the end of Sweden. Who's got to step up and do something in this third? Peter Forsberg. He's the best player in the world. He's Swedish best player. He's a leader wherever he goes. Uh, this guy is what hockey's all about in Sweden. Come on, Peter. It's time for you to turn this thing around. You haven't had a good tournament. Get the job done. Score the first goal. Make a 3-1. Anything can happen after that. And Marcus Naslin, four straight 30-goal seasons, has yet to find the lamp anywhere in this tournament. Third period action is going to be rolling your way in just a matter of moments. Here on ESPN, and if you like baseball... I love baseball. Well, Cards Padres, that could be a playoff preview right there. D-Rays, Yankees, Red Sox, A's. Who's going to win that AL East? Oh, you got to go with the Yankees. They do it every year, but it's getting interesting. All right, well, you're not, that's not a popular uh, pick. I got two sons. Or... Like One son's a Yankee fan, one son's a Red Sox fan. How would you like my house? <laughs> we have wall-to-wall -wall baseball coming your way Wednesday. A triple header. Keep it locked here on the ESPN family of networks. They're not happy in the control room, Barry. You know who else isn't happy? Sweden. Down three <laughs> long second intermission. Look, Barry, come your way next. ESPN's presentation of the Toyota World Cup of Hockey is brought to you by the Toyota Tundra Double Cab. Not just big, life-sized. And Samuel Adams. When you're ready for a distinctive brew, Samuel Adams, always a good decision. This might be the last 20 minutes of hockey in this tournament for Team Sweden. Interesting to note, Brian, they were booed off the ice at the end of the second period, but they were cheered coming out here. They need a big start to this period. Well, they, they have to go with some pride right here. That's what they're playing for. Get themselves going again and, and just see what happens. But you can't go out there and try to win it in the first minute or so. And, you know, my experience with this is I disagree that they were booed going off the ice. I really think these fans were booing Goharski and Jonathan. Oh, maybe, maybe. Because when the referees came on the ice, they were booing heavily at those guys and then they cheered their team. So I, it's, it People would be boo referees here? It would really? be very unusual for me to hear a crowd in Sweden boo their own team, no matter what happened. Third period, underway. We'll see what Sweden has at the start of this. On the left side, Lidstrom. Sweden in need of a goal. The earlier, the better. Down three to nothing. Really unthinkable on home ice. Czech Republic starting back. Crossbow with the lead pass. It's cut off by Nordstrom. Off 
Straka. Back at the center line. Nordstrom. A few more strides in. Backhands it into the zone. Modine chasing it down. Even the big line has had nothing to do tonight for Sweden. Well, the Swedes have done a good job in some ways against the Aramir Yager. He's got no shots on goal and no points. The bad news is Vinny Prospo has got one point. Strzok has got two. Inside. You know, between periods, I was downstairs talking to Yuri Slager, the defenseman for the Czech team, who's sitting out this game with a little bit of a groin strain. He was saying to me how impressed he is with his own team's defensive work in the neutral zone. He said, boy, we're playing well defensively, don't you think we are? And I said, yeah. He said, they don't seem to have it going tonight, meaning the Swedish team. They've really jammed up the neutral zone. At times, it's a 1-4. They only send one guy in, then they have four guys in a jam pack in the neutral. But but what they've done offensively has been really impressive, too. When the, when the Czechs have had a chance, they get in the offensive zone. They've played well along the wall. And guys like Martin Havlet and Baborny in particular have used their offensive speed, whereas Peter Forsberg and the star players for the Swedish team have not established that speed and have not established that puck control game that is theirs at all in this game. Bacek dumps it in. Eliash with a flipper on the boards. Havlat on the chase. Forsberg now. Left side. And Zetterberg over the line. In front from Paulson. Steered wide of Okun. Forsberg in front. Janssen. That hit, the, the that hit the shaft of the stick, I think. That was labeled for the far corner. I think that hit the shaft of the stick of Volkun. And all of a sudden, the people in the Globe and Arena have drank a cup of coffee and wake up again because they got those great scoring chances. Kim Janssen, who was a little bit of a goat earlier for that errant pass that he made in his own zone, comes through here. He's developed into a pretty good offensive player for the Philadelphia Flyers and, of course, for Team Sweden. There's a near miss right there on a pass in front of the net. And in a moment, you're going to see Kim Janssen move in from his point, kick it to his stick, and see that? You're right, Brian, right off the shaft of Vokun's stick. That's the way it's gone tonight. I mean, the few chances for the Swedes that they've got going, something like that happens. That's disheartening when you go, I, you're kidding me. It, it's, it's an open net, and it hit the shaft of his stick. But you, you've got to shrug it off. The Swedes are still too preoccupied with the referees and how things are not going right for them, and they are running out of time very quickly. And, you know, it's one thing to try to get the sympathy of your countrymen when you're in your own building, you know, by taking your glove off and saying, hey, what about my cut lip? But you've got to play the hockey game. You, you can't worry. No matter how much this crowd boos, they're not going to intimidate Kahorski and Jonette into calling more penalties. I don't care. These guys are seasoned veteran officials. The defense for the Czechs have played better in this game than they have in every game. But again, I'm going to go back to Thomas Volkun. Not because of what he's doing inside the net, it's what he's doing outside the net. He's making his D look better, and the D are able to stand up in the neutral zone and play good defense because of the help and support they're getting from their forwards right here in a situation like that. Look at that. Another good turnover for the Czechs. Very difficult for the Swedes to pick their way through this defensive net that the Czechs have set up in the 3-0 lead. Neutral zone play, Nordstrom across ice, now over the line. Axelson shot hit the side netting. Along the boards, kept in by Sweden, a rolling puck settled. Hope checked ahead. Hamerlick was down on his knees as he made that play. The Czechs said at the beginning that they were only that they were going to sit out good players, they were just going to give everybody a chance. And, and, and throughout this game, especially early on, Rosie Wozicki, the coach of the Czech team, has shortened his bench a lot of times too, and he has gone with his very best players, and it has worked, so he, he's done a good job here. Winner goes on to the semifinals in North America on the weekend. The loser, their tournament's over. Here's Sundin, one hand on the stick. Didn't get it past Boku. Now in the slot area, the Ragnarsson shot steered away, that never reached the net. See, there, there's two chances for Sweden. They both get to the net, but Sundin is kind of half-checked at the last second. He's on his backhand. He has to shovel it to the net. The defense jumps in, can't quite finish the play, can't quite get the, the puck all the way to the net. Nothing comes from it. Look out there. That's Yager with a backhander, and it's stopped by Telquist. And back the other way, Zetterberg. Over the line, leaves it off. Sweden looking still for that first goal. It's hard to come by. Tarnstam played it into the corner to Zetterberg. Battle there with spot check. Loose puck gathered in. Forsberg flipped it in front. Paulson coming up by Bokun. He hangs on, gets the face off with 16-13 to go. 
in the third. Well, you called it a defensive net earlier by this Czech team, and I think you're absolutely right. That's exactly what it looks like. It looks like Spider-Man 3 out here, that a big net webbing has been thrown over the Swedish team as they come through. You take a look at Jager's last chance. This was played very well by Telquist. He held his ground. But, you know, it's very impressive how their defensemen are standing up at the blue line. The forwards are coming back. No chance to pick their way through. And when they do pick their way through, it's usually just a sliding puck that Thomas Volkun gobbles up. Off the draw. Controlled by Olin. Big shot there as well wide of Volkun, who was screened in front. Holmstrom. And he'll lose the puck there. Two on two is broken up there by Sweden. And then they lose the puck. Great work rate by Havlat coming back. Helping to win the puck again. Havlat's been one of the best players in the ice tonight again. I mean, I'm really impressed with his speed. He's around the puck all the time. Positions himself well. When there's loose pucks, nobody can catch this guy. Woods far side. That's broken up. T.S. Olin with it. Lead pass. Jonsson breaks it over the line. A rolling puck. He'll settle and then shoots it up off the netting. For more great World Cup of Hockey quarterfinal action, tune into ESPN2 tonight and tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern. Tonight at 7, North American Pool quarterfinal action, USA versus Russia. Tomorrow, Canada versus Slovakia. The World Cup of Hockey on ESPN and ESPN2. We'll see what the USA can do tonight. The biggest story was Brett Hull sitting out the last game. They had some really impressive guys taken out of the lineup. Ron Wilson, the coach of the U.S. team, came taking a gamble, but he got him sparked, and they won that game. Will Hull go back in, or Weinrich, or Rafalski, Brian Ralston. There's some big decisions there, but especially the all eyes will be on Brett Hall and whether or not he's back in the lineup. Craig Conroy is another big free yes. agent that went to the LA Kings that they sat out in that game and you know that's the trouble you win the game now what do you put those players back in do you go with the lineup the one how long can that lineup that depleted lineup really keep winning it's always a trick that the coach has got to meticulously play with and when to put those players back in and how to do it how does he upset team chemistry that's right and it's one of those things that uh, everybody sits back and if you're wrong they're going to pick you apart no matter which way you do it it, it was a it gamble to do it at the beginning it, it worked to spark them my guess is that he does make some changes and he does put some other players back in i agree with you neil my first instinct would be you would think and of course we're just guessing he's there he has the feel for the team he knows who's really producing and, and we don't but my guess is i'll bet you at least one or two of those guys go back in well he's made his statement now saying it was against slovakia that's the one he could do, most afford to do it against last ball is tied up trying to draw a penalty instead it's two on two the other way an easy save for bokun as most of them have been tonight he's not really been challenged all that much this evening Let's go to the Finns, too. The Finns have already made their way over there, but this Finnish team that's already over in North America, folks, is, is a little messed up. There was a blowout between the coach, Ramo Suminen, and Jani Nienema after the Swedish game. Apparently, it goes back to the World Championships last year in which the coach, Suminen, got in Nienema's face. Well, apparently did after the Swedish game, too. Berated him during the game, berated him after the game, even as much as an hour after the game. So Nienema quit. He quit the team. He is not with the Finnish team. And so there, Finland is out without a very good defenseman in Yanni Nienema. So the Finnish team, the players are supporting the player. They're not really behind their coach right now. And so Re Remo Zuminen's got an interesting situation for the Finnish team. Will this team, I mean, are, are the Finns on the brink of disaster? Or will they bond together and be stronger? We'll see. Zetterberg almost got one there as a backhander just going wide. The, the Swedes are trying to put pressure on in this third period. Fisher recovered well, and then he lost the puck. He got some help there from a teammate, but now Zetterberg keeps it alive. In the corner it goes. Paulson after it. Two players jamming along the boards. Zidlitsky's over. Puck is still free. The attempted pass in front. Jonsson hit the side netting again. Zetterberg checked there. It goes free on the left. In front off a deflection, and the Czechs are still able to clear it away. Penalties coming up here on that Sweden takedown. So when we come back, the Czechs with a three-goal lead will also have a power play. Samuel Paulson off for tripping the scene. Must kill power play. Sweden has to kill it. If anything, get a shorthanded goal, but at the very least, stop this power play for the Czechs. Czechs have had a killer instinct all night. 
up by three goals. Man advantage here for one of the few times tonight. In the corner, it's flipped around those boards. The chase is on. Johnson got there first, cleared it out. Backing it up, Hamerlick. Nolan Hamerlick getting it back, working the point along with Spacek. The pass up ice over the line, spun around. This is Straka. Has to wait until his mates have cleared the zone. And picked off by Jonsson. Big chance there, shorthanded, but it's deflected up into the netting. Face off coming up. And you know, not a lot of authority in the Swedish game at all. Nothing in their puck possession, nothing in their shots. You just don't feel like they believe they're going to be able to do it. When you see players that just take shots like that, that was a blatant giveaway, and even couldn't even get a shot on net. And on the other side, you got the checks. It was Marty Straka's goal really got him going. Havlat's goal was just an outstanding play. And then Zidlitsky's goal on the, on the two-on-one, scoring like a 50-goal scorer. He's a defenseman jumping up on the play. So it, it has been night and day difference between the Czechs and the Swedes with what they've done with the puck. Czech Republic still on the power play. Less than a minute to go on it. The dump in wide of Telkvist. Lidstrom is after it there. Two Czech players in the corner, including Havlat, flipped around. Eliash looking. Backhander to Viborny. It's tipped out of the zone. On it is Camberlay. Lone defenseman out there in this power play. Seen that a lot of this tournament. Four forwards, 1D. Handle it. Hooking is the call. Well, they're definitely a hook, and the one thing that you can't do when you're on the power play is do any kind of obstruction to the penalty killing, and that's certainly what Eliash did here, as you see him give the little tug there. Yeah, it probably was an embellishment, but you know what? When you're on the power play, you can't take a chance because the referee's looking for a penalty, particularly the way the, the calls have gone in this game, uh, much to the dismay of this Swedish crowd. Four on four hockey for some 37 seconds. And then a minute 23 on a power play for Sweden when that is said and done. When they get their guy out of the box, Paulson. Four on four for now. Into the corner it goes. Zidlitsky after with Alfredson. Zidlitsky gets a piece, not all. Flipped along the boards. Ragnarsson holds there. In the corner, Alfredson. One hand on that stick, using his strength. That was... Well done by Alfredson. Centering pass intended for Alfredson. It's cut off, and here comes the Czech Republic. It'll be a two-on-one break. Heading for the net is Dvorak. Putting on the brakes, oh. Dvorak tipped it home. Radic Dvorak makes it a 4-0 game. And that, I believe, is a shorthanded goal as well. Uh, definitely is a shorthanded goal. There's a minute 23 to go in the power play for Sweden. But Radic Dvorak, who's always been a great penalty killer, you saw what he did. He went hard to the net, but the real thing here was Tyanic pulling up the way he did. Watch, the brakes are going to go on right there. Boom. He, that throws the defenseman right off, and all Dvorak does is go hard towards the net. Right there, he stands right there. Telquist doesn't have much of a chance because the defenders have to take that guy. But you talk about nails and coffins. Boy, oh boy, you hear the hammer right now. That was brilliant. That was absolutely brilliant. And you know what? It started from the Czech zone zone. They did a complete rotation in their own zone of all four guys. All four guys exchanged position. And then Chianic and, and Dvorak jumping out of the zone. Peter Chianic has been the best player I've seen in this tournament anytime his team only has four players. That was four on four at the start of the play. It turned into a shorthanded situation. This kid has got great skills and instincts. That was beautiful execution by Chianic. Never saw Paulson come out, but that was about maybe 10, 12 seconds or so after he was on the ice when the Czech scored. Forsberg can't get out in front of the net. Merrick Malik on it. Who would have predicted this score? 4 nothing. A trouncing on home ice. Sweden has looked so bad tonight, but the Czechs have looked so great. Now I can guarantee you, Brian, that booing is on the Swedish team. <laughs> yes. I said earlier it was the referees. That time it's the Swedes. Czechs with it. They're just dumping it. Stopped by Telfist. This is a stunning game. I mean, everyone expected that the Czechs could win the game, so we're not saying that that's a huge upset like that. But yeah. the scoreline, no one would have thought this. You're right. That's true. I mean, coming into this tournament, the Czechs were the one team you point to and you go, eh, I just don't know about them. Because they got great talent, especially their forwards are very talented. Their defense, good, decent. Bokun, very good goalie. You go, okay. But you, they're like Forrest Gump's box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. Well, they're coming up all creams in this one because, I mean, just they've been brilliant in this game. They, they really have. This is Czech Republic hockey at its best. 
and it's the Swedes right now at their worst. And you know, they also, you had to think a lot about the death of Ivan Halink and what that would do to this team. That was only a couple of weeks before the tournament started. They get a brand new coach in Rosie Rosichka. We don't know how that's going to play out. We think that maybe that'll be an excuse for them to lay down, or will it motivate them? Well, it turns out that it, something has certainly motivated them even more and more as the tournament goes on. Now look out North America, because this Czech team is really ready to win this tournament, I think. I haven't seen a team yeah. play this well for a long time. Agreed. And this is a completely different team, completely different environment. Any, the most dangerous teams in any tournament situation are the ones that have gone through the most stuff and survived. Well, the Chucks qualify in that department. Aslan behind the net, looking for some help. Digs it free, comes out of the circle. The shot stopped by Mokun. He holds on, gets the whistle there. It is all Czech Republic tonight on the road here in Stockholm. It's a 4-0 lead. Radic Dvorak's goal on the two-on-one is one of the best two-on-one goals I have ever seen. I like it better even than Zedlitsky's goal because Chianic has the presence of mind to stop and Radic Dvorak has the presence of mind to stop and not fly by the net. Both guys working in sequence. Chianic made the best play, but overall it was brilliant. And great goals tonight by the Czech Republic. A near flawless performance. It's a 4-0 lead on Sweden ice. More players battle at Sundin. Players jamming still. Puck is still free. And finally, Don Koharski blows the whistle right now. Let's head back to our ESPN studios. David Amber has this Sam Adams tournament update. All right, guys, the Czech Republic just eight minutes in change from working their way into the semifinals. They'll be joining Finland, who made their way there yesterday. A 2-1 win over Germany in the first European quarterfinal. And Canada's getting set to play Slovla Slovakia tomorrow. Martin Brodeur's been sensational, picking up all three wins for Team Canada. And tonight, 7 p.m. Eastern on ESPN2, it's the U.S. and Russia. That'll get to our four semifinalists. Back to you in Stockholm. That draw, the shot was stopped by Telchrist. Less than nine minutes to go in Sweden's World Cup of Hockey Tournament. They are down four to nothing on home ice against the outstanding Czech Republic team that saved their best for last in a must-win game here in the knockout stage. Telquist is battling more effectively than any other Swedish player in this game, and he's still down four zip. Sort of like Volkun in game one. True. In the Finland game. Good analogy, yeah. Well, and in case any of you people out there are looking for your favorite player in the Army Nogger, he's not on the bench, he's not playing in this third period. He left early, he came out to start the third period, and then left with an ice bag apparently on his ribs. He's got some sort of injury. No sense taking a chance with this kind of lead. Backhander by Pospola stopped and going to the corner. Pretty much like the Stanley Cup playoffs, too. You're hearing lower body and upper body injuries. Nothing more specific than that. Four players in the corner. Puck is still free. 7.40 to go. Look at Zidlitsky jumping in the play. He's looking for a second goal. Marek Zidlitsky. And, he, and he, he took that one and flipped it between his feet. It was rolling and bouncing on him. Otherwise, he gets a much better shot at that. I'm telling you, this guy's an extremely creative defenseman who has excellent offensive instincts, and nothing holds him back. He saw a chance and very nearly finished off a, another goal-scoring chance. His goal in this game was scored like a 50-goal scorer on a two-on-one top shelf on the short side. Zidlitsky is well, a terrific player. I'll tell you one thing, and of course, here you go, Brian. Here comes out my GM hat, but I'll tell you one thing. What a trade by David Quill getting Zidlitsky. You know, he was a very late pick by the Rangers and ended up being traded over to the Nashville Predators. And boy, oh boy, what a find this guy is. He really is. I, you know, I didn't realize he was as good as he is in this tournament. He's not very big, and so the, the knock against anybody, and certainly in the NHL level or here, when you're playing against big players, if he gets caught in situations down low against Sundins and Modines and players like that, yeah, he's going to struggle. But he knows how to play his position and get inside position defensively. But his strength is with the puck, especially on the power play, jumping into plays, and he can score. He's got the feel. And there's another guy just like that that's done pretty well in the NHL. That's Sergei Zubov. So it describes the same guy, but Sergei started off about 10, 12 years ago. The same things that were looked at against him. Not very yep. strong, not very physical, but boy, had great instincts to jump up. Team Sweden with Parnstrom. Looking for Axis, and that's broken up. Dvorak comes back to the loose puck. 
Radek Dvorak getting that last goal, making a four to nothing check lead as Telkvist steers it to the near boards for Jonsson. Ragnarsson's pass. Too long intended for Sundin. This is going for an icing call. And the touch is made. Stay with ESPN tonight, 9 p.m. 2004 World Series of Poker. Continues to the Horseshoe Casino in Las Vegas. Two more hours of the main event. The No Limit the World Championship. The 2004 World Series of Poker on ESPN. Presented, presented by Miller High Life. It comes your way every Tuesday at 9 Eastern. On those boards, Sweden looking. Just trying to move it out of their zone. Tied up there, Dvorak picks it up, flips it around the boards. Lapita. Michael getting a rare shift out there now. Quick shot, saved there. Michael nearly tipped it home. Mark in front, that's straight away by Telkis. Alfredson coming back up ice for Sweden. Over the line. And now players are trapped in the zone. Dvorak picks up the loose puck. Less than six minutes to go in Sweden's World Cup of Hockey Tournament. The Czech Republic will be headed for North America to join Finland from this European group. I tell you, some of the Swedes out there look like they don't know what day it is. I mean, I know I don't know what day it is, but I can tell you guys, when you can eat your own weight and pickled herring for breakfast, you don't care what day it is. <laughs> <laughs> Over the line, quick shot taken, and it's stopped by Telkis. Luchinski nearly had one. Went out in front. Hayduk scores. Oh, this is embarrassing tonight for Sweden. It's getting worse and worse. And look at the people now. They are heading for the exit. And that's odd, folks. I know you guys out there probably think, well, that's normal, 5 nothing for the visitors. Of course you're going to head for the exit. They don't do that in hockey country like Sweden. They stay around for the entire game. But in this building, they are leaving this place like ants running out to sugar. I'll tell you, what a great move there by Milan Hayduke. And Telquist is just, you can't blame him, really. The guy has, has tried his best. He battled all night long. But his defensively, the Swedes have been pitiful. I mean, I, I sure they know it. They're going to admit it after the game. There, there could be a lawsuit here by Telquist. I mean, just no support at all. I mean, he left all alone in front there. And I feel bad for him. He has battled hard here. He's made a lot of really good saves. And he's down five zip. Delayed penalty coming up here. And we'll sort things out when we return to our coverage. It's a stunner from Stockholm. It's all Czech Republic. Hated with the last goal. Merrick Malik in the penalty box. A nice goal it was. Czech Republic continues to put the pressure on. Five different goal scorers tonight. And in their 7-2 and over Germany, seven different goal scorers. So they're getting all kinds of balance from their players. And you saw in that last goal, I mean, the Czech players had two guys in front. The Swedes had guys back, but nobody had anybody. Everybody's just totally disorganized and everywhere except where they're supposed to be. It's just, just a total power failure on all levels for the Swedes. Now, tomorrow's a day that you wish you could read Swedish because the Expressen, which is their version of the New York Post over here, will just rip into these guys. You can be sure of that. Zetterberg's over the line. It's a power play for Sweden. They have done nothing well tonight. Tell Chris will steer it to Olin. The building right now is about half full. That's how many people have left. This Swedish team came in here with, in my mind, the combination of forwards and defense second to nobody in the entire tournament but on both sides of the Atlantic. The question mark was their goaltender. They were losing this game badly, not because of the goaltender, but because of everybody else. We hope you're enjoying ESPN and ESPN 2's continuing coverage of each other. The World Cup of Hockey, we're coming to you tonight from the Globe Arena. Neil Smith and Brian Engblom, I'm J.P. Della Camera. It is stunning. We're here. We're watching it. Czech Republic, yeah, we knew they had a chance to win this game for sure, but not by five to nothing. Well, the Swedes also have had no fight back in them at all. Oh, my goodness, that puck. See, that's what I'm talking about, about the, the, the glass. glass. Sorry to, to finish that point. There's no glass there. The NHL player, Spacek at that time, yeah. just turns around and whips the thing, and it's going to go off the glass. Well, it almost went off Czech Manic's melon. Yes, <laughs> I mean, that's man. right. And one of the coaches in behind you, right. He could have got two at once. Yeah. <laughs> Normally in the NHL, that would have gone off the glass and out of the zone, but this is, is very different on this near side of the ice to us because there is no glass almost from one end to the other. You're right, the hash mark, the hash mark, no glass. Power play continuing for Sweden. They're down big here, 5 nothing at home. Big shot taken, block, and the Czechs are able to clear it out. Just to finish that earlier thought, what I've been disappointed in the Swedes is that the fact that they started off with a bang. And finally. Homestead. Just as I'm talking about a bang. 
Holmstrom puts it in, but they started off with a bang, but really during this game, Brian, they've had real no, not much fight back in them, you know. They started hard, but as soon as the checks went up, they all, the air came out of the balloon really quickly. No feel at all. They would have prayed for a goal like this about 20 minutes ago, and it's a bad angle. It's not even a great scoring chance. He just rips it, and it finds a hole. I think it went in a five-hole. That's the only mistake the Volkun has made in this game, and the team, the Czech team, didn't give that one up. That was just a shot from the outside. There were way better scoring chances in this game for the Swedes. A timeout has been called here. And the Swedes are going to try and build a little bit of momentum. They're a long ways down. This would be a major <laughs> miracle to try and get anything going here and get themselves back in the game. But, you know, the Swedes had chances and nothing came of it earlier in the game. I want to just score right now. Holmstrom with that last goal for more great World Cup of Hockey quarterfinal action. Tune in to ESPN2 tonight and tomorrow at 7 Eastern. Tonight at 7, North American group quarterfinal action gets underway. USA versus Russia. Tomorrow, top seed in Canada looks to continue their perfect ways. They're 3-0-0. They'll take on Slovakia, the World Cup of Hockey. They're at ESPN and ESPN2. Obviously, Canada, the favorite team in that one and everyone thought that the Canadians and the Swedes were probably the two best teams coming into this yep, tournament absolutely and uh, Sweden's you know not gonna make it well in the open tonight I talked about the checks and the shots that they had in the last two games how about this folks 137 shots in their last three games of this tournament they've got 31 tonight and Telquist is on the bench you know what give the Swedish coach credit he's gone to six attackers he's down 5-1 with 331 to go we wouldn't see this in the NHL yeah. but you know what he loses this game he's eliminated anyway so show the players that if they're not going to put in the effort at least you're going to put in the effort to keep trying good point three and a half minutes to go and no goalie in the net in the corner four players pick it up checks with Dvorak looks up saw that empty net couldn't get it through Johnson the other way Alfredson left side Lidstrom Sweden down 5-1 three more minutes left in their World Cup of Hockey tournament Freddie, excuse me, Freddie Modine's out there for the Swedes, the most dynamic scorer in the entire tournament so far. I hardly even noticed him. Well, they get a scoring chance there from Alfred, but Freddie Modine has had no scoring chances, no puck possession, no nothing in this game. Quick shot taken, and that's blocked. Janssen, Janssen stops it there, keeps it in the offensive zone. Hamilton, check there. Puck is free, the checks get it. Empty net the other end, it's just sent off the boards. Just so that you know this isn't completely about pride in your country in hockey, the winners of this game are guaranteed that they'll split $100,000 Canadian. That's if you come in third or fourth. If you come in second in the World Cup, that means you've lost in the final game to the champion. You get 300,000 Canadians to split between your teammates. And if you win the World Cup, you get a million Canadian to split between all the players on the team. That's in today's exchange rate, about 700 or 680,000 US. Oh, don't talk to us about exchange rates. <laughs> We've, <laughs> We've got around the trouble. bend with that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Centering pass is cut off, and the Czechs still staring at an empty net. Here's Hayduk looking, shooting from 60, and Milan Hayduk has his second goal of this game. That was a brilliant goal. He beat Telquist with no problem at all on that one. <laughs> But you know what? I still, Brian, give them credit. Give the Swedish coach credit. I like to see a guy who just doesn't stand there and say to heck with it. It's you guys. It's your fault. I mean, this guy called them over, took a timeout. Yep. In the NHL, that would be seen as embarrassing. But it wasn't in this game. As we look down at the net to our right, and it's still empty. So that means they're just going to keep Telquist out of the net. This one could go pretty high. This is an old Scotty Bowman Buffalo Sabres game. Yep. Remember the times he kept him out of the net for, for almost the third period. Oh, now Telquist is yeah. going back in. As he goes back in, most of the other people in the building are leaving. Well, they were trying to build on the little bit of momentum. When Holmstrom finally scored that goal, they wanted to try and come right back and, and, and stick him and see if they could get anything going. But now, with the Hayduke goal, it takes the wind out of the sails again. Back up ice. Czech Republic on the move. They're headed for North America to join Finland in the semifinals of this World Cup of Hockey tournament. Havlat leads it into the corner. Eliash, near side for Havlat. And the Czechs, you know, will face the winner. Uh, I mean, if Canada wins, they have to play Slovakia and eliminate them. But if they do, Canada will get the Czechs because the way the tournament goes, the highest seed in the Canadian side, which or in, sorry, in the North American side, which would be Team Canada, if they win, 
would go against the lowest seed of the European side. We already know that Finland ended first on this side. The Czechs ended in third. So that guarantees that if Canada wins, they know who their opponent's going to be already for the semifinal game, and that'll be the Czechs. Off the draw, Malik with a shot that's wide of Telkvist. A minute left in this World Cup of Hockey tournament for Sweden. Stunned here on home ice, 6-1, they're down. Bokun off a stick, Albertson kept it in. Dompita will take it for the Czechs. Several players have been excellent in this game as the Czechs have gotten rolling. Straka's been really good, Havlat's been really good, Zidlitsky's been really good, Chianik's been really good. Those, those are some of my favorite players for the Czech team over the last two games, actually. And, I, and Marty Straka has been excellent too. I wasn't sure if you mentioned him yeah. or not. I was looking at the game, but I mean, pretty well no one on the Czech team has been disappointing. Um, it, they have really come out here and wanted to win this hockey game and completely just taken it away from the Swedes. Domination. The score is not misleading at all. It's 6-1. to Sweden and will it, be eliminated. And it's unfortunate for the Swedes. They're a heck of a team. They've played some, some great games in this tournament. But it comes down to a one-game shot. It's not a playoff series. And the Swedes come up here at home big time short. Guys, this is incredible. I'm still stunned at the score, the way this thing went down tonight. But give full credit to the Czechs. They played their best game by far, and Sweden played their worst. Well, you know, I did the game, as you know, in Helsinki when we started this entire tournament. It was the Czechs in Finland. They came out. They, they, they looked dopey. They looked like they had a lot of jet lag. They didn't look like they cared. And a, and a lot of us were talking about whether the death of Ivan Halenka would absolutely take all the motivation away from the Czechs. And that really, you know, was resilient going to coach this team very well he we didn't know you know would they play hard would Yager come through after him making statements about not even wanting to play and you know what here they show up in this big game they built momentum they've gotten better and better as each game's gone along and really obviously a deserving winner tonight in, in that first game you had uh, Caberlet didn't play Hammerlick didn't play and Prospel didn't play ends up being three of their best players then the next game you had Milan Hayduk didn't play this Czech team was all messed up all you saw was shoulder shrugging in the first three games. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I don't know. I don't know. Well, now they know. And so now you got the two teams coming out of here, this Czech team that has fixed things, and you got the Finnish team that is already over in North America has, has won their game as well. But they've got turmoil going on as well, too. But look out for the Finns. They're a good team. Final score is 6-1 to one in favor of the Czech Republic. And they are going to be going on into the semifinals of this tournament. Stay tuned for more great action for the World Cup of Hockey tonight. USA versus Russia. That's at 7 p.m. Today's game, a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Up next, the 2003 Green Bay Packers yearbook for Brian Engblom, Neil Smith, and our crew. I'm J.P. Della Camera. We head back to David Amber in our ESPN studios. All right, guys, I'm joined by Barry Melrose. And uh, Barry, so much for home ice advantage. 6-1, they stroll into Stockholm, come out with a 6-1 win. They look great today. Well, we just saw our first work stoppage of the year before <laughs> September 15th. The Swedes were terrible. I've never seen them uh, less ready to play, less physical, less motivated. They look like the Czechs that played the Finland uh, finish in the first game. Uh, it's just unexplainable. The Swedes are normally a very uh, high-powered offense. They work extremely hard. They're very solid defensively, and they really grind you. They make you pay a price to play them. Uh, Peter Forsberg was not great this tournament. Uh, Marcus Nadal was not great this tournament. Two of the best hockey players in the world. Goaltending was a question. Mark, although he couldn't blame Telquist, he never made any big saves early when this team was flat to give them a chance to regroup and get ready to go. On the other side of the coin, the checks were great. Uh, I thought, although Yager didn't score uh, in this game, I thought he competed very hard. And that's the key for the checks is competing. If this team competes against Canada and goes at Canada and makes Canada play defense uh, and, and makes him battle and makes him pay a price, uh, this is going to be a tough game against Canadians. I'm giving Canada the game against Slovakia already. Hopefully that won't come back to haunt me, but it should be Canada against the Czechs in the first round of the uh, crossovers. And look out, Barry, here come the Czechs. Five different goal scores, yep. and in the last seven periods, they have outscored their opponents 16-3. to three. So the Czech Republic moves on, Finland moves on. They're the two teams that move on from the European bracket, and still a lot to be figured out, Barry. U.S., Russia, Canada, Slovakia. Well, the Russians dominated the United States in Game 1, although the score was only 3-1. to one. I thought it flattered the Americans. Americans got lots of question marks. They played better against the Slovaks. But let's see if they can come back against a much superior Russian team, make this Russian team play a little bit defense, and, and beat them tonight in St. Paul.
Uh, your thoughts, Barry, going into tonight's game? No Brett Hall, but we do have a Robert Esch in net. Uh, I think it's going to be tough for the Americans. It's an older team. I said before, you mentioned they've had five days rest, which is good. But uh, this team has not been great in this tournament. It and the Czechs have been my two biggest disappointments going into the final games. The Czechs certainly rebounded and showed that they're a world-class team. Americans got to do the same thing. But they got a lot of legs over 35 years old. They got a lot of the same guys from uh, 96 that are the stars of this team. Uh, you look at the other teams that are in this tournament right now, they've really changed their team since 96. Canada, Russia, etc. The Americans have not. Uh, Leach has to play better. Amante has to play better. Wade has to play better. And Robert Ash still has to be great in that. Experience versus youth. Yep. U.S. versus Russia should be great tonight. Of course, it is elimination in the U.S. Yep. of A. Yes, you can is. catch that game 7 Eastern on ESPN2. We hope to see you there on the deuce tonight. And coming up next is the 2003 Green Bay Packers yearbook. Enjoy.